Hey. Hi. Well, are you ready to plant some bulbs? Yes. Okay. We're gonna. I got the beds already started and prepared. We're gonna plant some tulips. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. All right. Let's go. Well, hey there, gardeners. Thanks for stopping by my channel. My granddaughter and I are planting some tulips. And I have these beds which are about, I believe they're four by four, something like that. So we're gonna do these two beds here with tulips. I treat my tulips as annuals. And um, please don't <laughs> judge me on that. I need to use these beds for my you know, annuals and my dahlias and things like that. And I don't really have time to leave them in the beds so that the, um, the green can all die back and feed the bulbs. I just really don't have time to do that because I need to turn these beds over for my cut flowers and so forth. So these beds worked really hard for me this summer. Uh, I have amended them each with fresh compost and I did go ahead and sprinkle some Biotone starter fertilizer in each of these two beds um, just because the beds have worked so hard. Normally your bulb really has everything it needs in it to feed itself but since these beds work so hard I decided to go ahead and amend them a little bit. So my granddaughter C is planting them here. Did we put pointy side up on all of them? Yeah. That one looks like maybe not. Yeah, that's hard to tell. Yes, I think you were right. This is bottom, this is top. So you wanna make sure you do pointy side up on your tulips. Good. So I have my drill and my auger in my hand, but in this case, we are not using the drill and auger we're doing what's called the trench method. And I cut the bed in half visually, and then I took out six inches of soil, and you can see it there. I took out the six inches of soil and just put it in the cart, and then we will just put the soil right back on top. Then we'll do the same thing for the other half of the bed, and then we'll do the same thing for this bed. If I were planting in the ground, I would use my auger and my drill. This is a 20 volt, drill and this is the side handle strongly recommend using your side handle on your drill if you're using an auger this is a three inch in diameter by seven inches long auger and these are uh, from power planter i love the power planter products i have a two by seven i have the three by seven and then i have a three by 24 inch so uh, when you're running your your drill with your auger. You wanna make sure you're on the lowest speed, which is the one, and then they recommend to put it on the um, screwdriver option, and you can see that on your drill here. And that keeps, if you hit a rock or something like that, that keeps your drill from doing this because it will definitely turn on you and it could damage your wrist. But that's one of the important reasons of having the uh, side handle. So anyway, I love my drill, my auger, but we can't use it today just because of this trench method. Um, just won't work. But I just wanted to show you, if you're planting bulbs in the ground, this is the way to go. Trust me, especially with my ground, uh, I, I can't really use the bulb planter, the manual things. I have to use something that's a little bit stronger. So. So the tulips that we're planting are from Longfield Gardens. Uh, I ordered them. And then I have some just from like Lowe's or whatever. My granddaughter has the first two rows here. So we're gonna fill them, fill it in with the uh, soil, cover them up, and then we're gonna hit the other side the same way. And then once I make all my leaf mulch from after the trees all shed their leaves, I will make leaf mulch. I have a blower that sucks the leaves and then grinds them up. So I'm going to put about an inch of leaf mulch on the top. That's what I did last year. And that just decomposes. It, it brings carbon into your soil. It's a great leaf mulch. is really great mulch. So I will do that and that will be an extra layer of protection. So now comes the part of just gently doing the first layer of soil so that you don't move your bulbs around too much. 
So we have to make sure I remember where our middle line is. <laughs> and obviously you can just rake your soil, you know, to one side and do your six inches that way. But if you have um, a little cart or something, it's nice to go ahead and just remove it. Makes it a little bit easier. And these two beds had straw flowers and uh, dahlias in them. So they definitely worked really hard during the summer. And then last spring, and I'll throw a, a picture up of the tulips from last spring. But um, of course they had the tulips last, all last winter and spring. You know, as long as your ground isn't frozen, you can plant bulbs. Now, if you are in zones eight and higher, you would have to give your, um, my sleeves are falling down. So if you are in zones eight or higher, eight through I think 11, then you would have to uh, let your bulbs have the cold, I think it's called the cold stratification period. So you'd keep them in like a refrigerator for 10 to 12 weeks, just like, you know, they are here and they'll be in the cold. Um, but that's what you would have to do in order to have tulips. And then you could plant your bulbs out and have some nice spring bulbs. Now we're just going to do the other half. So you want to get the bulbs ready that you're going to put in the other half. And we're going to put the foxy fox trot in the front. To put, um, I think, 10 of those. This is my drip tubing here. And I just wound it up. I'm not going to um, be using that at all during the winter. That is put to rest for the winter. But you can water your bulbs in well once you plant them, especially if you use bulb tone or uh, bone meal. You can use bone meal, mix it in. Thank you, darling. Almost done, and then you can plant the rest. How many do you have left? Um, oh, is that the whole foxy fox yeah, trot? I have both bags. Okay. Do we need any more out of those other bags or? Okay. Well, we can put those in the other bed. That's good. That's Does fine. that look like six inches to you? Okay. There you go. Pointy side up. Do one row of that and then one row of the foxy fox trot. Okay. So are you doing 10 per row? Yes. Okay. Perfect. She's doing a great job. She has beautiful garden beds at her home. And she's in charge of, what are you in charge of? Tomatoes in the garden? Yeah. yeah. In the vegetable garden, tomatoes, and she has a strawberry bed. So she's quite the gardener. All of her siblings are. They all love gardening. I think. Do, do they love gardening? Well, they like having the stuff from the garden. <laughs> they like having the stuff from the garden. Perfect. All right, I'm going to cover these over. And we'll be done with this bed. And then I'm going to do this bed. It's the same thing, the repeat. So anyway, you could use hardwood mulch to make a nice um, cover. But the leaf mulch, if you have, if you're able to use leaf mulch, if you're able to grind your leaves up, is a wonderful mulch. I use leaves from our maple trees and from the dogwood trees. So uh, we got this one bed done. We, we got 40 bulbs in here. And um, my granddaughter was just telling me how most of her tulips perennialize, they come back. And you know, like I said, a lot of mine in my beds do. I'm certainly not gonna go digging them up. I'm gonna let them come back. But because of this being my enclosed garden and my cut garden, then I do need these beds for other things. I, I guess I'm trying to justify and talk you into the fact that I use my bulbs as uh, annuals. But anyway, I'm going to spray some repels all on the beds. The critters don't normally come in my enclosed garden area, but because I use the biotone starter in case they smell it, I really don't want to come out here and all, the uh, all of the bulbs be dug up. So 
The repels all doesn't hurt anything. It just stinks. It's all natural and it keeps them from wanting to dig. Mostly works very well. So we'll just give them a good spray. Oh, here's a bulb left over from last year. Funny. Okay, so that'll do it. Well, we really appreciate you um, being with us on planting these tulips. Hope to give you a really good update next spring when they bloom and they're beautiful and you can enjoy them with us. And uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you've watched this far. I should probably say that at the beginning. Would you give this video a thumbs up? But I always forget. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not in it for that. I'm in it to just uh, to bring information to you and share with you. So my granddaughter C and I appreciate you being here and we will see you next time. Happy gardening and have a great day. Bye.